Hello and welcome to the second in these fireside chats about swarm management. Now in the first video, and if you didn't see that, I've actually left a link below, we discussed how to do swarm management. And I also asked you if you've got any questions to drop them into the comments or email them in, and many of you did so, so thank you very much. So this seems like the ideal opportunity now, I've got my cup of tea, Carol's been baking uh, chocolate brownies and I've got one with the crunchy bits around the edge, so that's really good. If you want the recipe, they're over on the website, to actually sit down and answer your questions. So that's what the rest of this video is about. So if you recall, the very start point of the swarm management is to identify the point at which the bees are going to swarm. And to do that, we need to identify a swarm cell or queen cell that they're making. And the first question that was asked is a very logical one, which is, well, why wait for that? It's fraught with trauma and error in that you might miss one and the bees might swarm. So why not wait until the colony's built up and then split it at that point? And the colony that hasn't got a queen will very simply know they haven't got a queen, they'll have some eggs and they can make a new one and all's well in the world. And we don't need to worry about swarm cells. Well, that's an incredibly logical and sensible question to ask and it seems like a really good idea. The only problem is we've got to think first about our bees. If bees aren't ready to swarm and we force them to swarm, that's going to stress them. And one of the things we don't want to do is stress our bees. We want to allow them to go through the swarm process naturally, but without actually disappearing from the hive. The other problem we've got is that if we split our bees and they don't have a cell that they've made themselves, then they're going to go into panic mode and they're going to make a queen cell. Often they'll make a perfectly good queen, but we stand a very real chance of getting what we call a scratch queen. In other words, a queen that's been made from either an older larvae, because they can make queens from larvae up to two days old, or indeed from an egg. In a hurry, it's the wrong one and we don't get a very good queen. And that's what we don't want to do. The bees are always best at selecting which larvae or which eggs they want to use to make a queen. So yes, it would work, but we really don't encourage it because of stressing the bees and also the problems with the fact that you might not get a very good queen. Unfortunately, you're going to have to keep your eye open for those cells. And so here's just a reminder of what one looks like. This is quite a well-developed one, but keep your eyes open on those inspections for those cells so that you can identify when they're thinking about swarming and then you can go into swarm management mode. The second question that many of you asked is what to do if you've actually already got a super on the hive. And if that's got honey in it, then you can use that to feed the bees. Now remember from the swarm management video, it's the bees that have been split off, which in a natural swarm would actually gorge themselves on honey before they decided to leave the hive and so have plenty of stores to see them through a couple of three days. With our artificial swarm, they don't have those stores. So if you have got a super on, make sure that, that super goes onto the box which contains the old queen, and that way you'll give them some stores to keep going. Whether or not you've got a super, I would also make sure that they've got food in both boxes. It's really important that you ensure that the bees have got plenty of food. And if that means feeding them, well, that's not a problem. Just make sure they're fed, properly fed. One of the big advantages of doing an artificial swarm is the fact that we don't get starvation with our bees, which in many cases with a natural swarm, they'll go off. If the weather turns bad, they will starve. This way, we can ensure that the bees don't starve, that both actual colonies survive and have plenty to eat. So just keep an eye on those stores, but if you do have a super, put it on the hive that's actually got the old queen in it. The way that I showed you to actually do the artificial swarm is one where you're actually just splitting the hive and making two hives out of one, or indeed then putting them back together, and we discussed that in the video. But a wonderful person called Hot Tub Turtle, I'm just dying to know who Hot Tub Turtle is, asked the question, can you actually use the extra queen cells to make a nucleus? Now, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, a nucleus is a small hive of bees. It's what you'll actually get when you buy your bees in the first place. and consists of maybe three frames of brood and some bees and also some stores. But the answer to the question is, yes, you can make a nucleus out of the spare queen cells, and indeed I do that quite a lot. But it's outside the remit of the swarm management video that we did. But in the summer, when the weather picks up and we can get out of this chair and actually get out into the apiary, then we'll look at making a nucleus and I'll show you actually how to do that in the field. So for those of you who want to make nukes from your hives, then we'll show you how to do that come the great day. But 
Unfortunately, we've got to wait until the weather picks up, the bees start swarming, and we can actually do either swarm management or indeed we can do making of new nukes. Another question that was asked was, at the end of the artificial swarm process, we moved the hive from one side to the other and bled off some of the older bees. They were asked, well, why do we do that? Why not just take a couple of frames out and put them into the hive in the centre? Well, the reason for that is, if we bleed off the older bees, in other words, we move the hive, we allow the old bees to fly out and they come back to actually the middle hive, then we're discouraging them from the potential of throwing what we call a cast. Now a cast is where the bees decide they're going to swarm a second time and they'll actually produce another queen cell and a small, and a small swarm known as a cast will go off with that virgin queen. And they tend not to be very successful, so it's a really good idea to stop them doing that. And actually moving that hive across, bleeding off some of those old bees will enable them to do that, because it's the old bees again that would go off with that virgin queen to form a cast. The other thing is, as a general rule, it's a good idea not to move frames between hives. If you move the frames with bees on, then what you'll actually have is a situation where one set of bees will have a different queen or a pheromone on them and you can have fighting, you can have stress and you might even find that you get your queen damaged. The other thing is it's a really great way of moving disease between hives. Now not in this case because all the frames came from the same hive to start with but you've got to be very very careful about moving frames between hives. There is a time when you might do it, which is to test for a queenless hive, but that's another thing and we'll talk about that in another video sometime. For the purpose of this conversation, don't move the frames between the hives. Let the bees bleed off naturally to actually then boost the numbers in the middle hive. A couple of people said that I hadn't mentioned about clipping a queen's wings and that as a form of swarm management. Well, there's a couple of reasons for that. One is I haven't made a video on it yet, but I will be come the summer. The other one is the fact that actually clipping a queen's wing does not stop them swarming. It's not actually a form of swarm management. It's an insurance policy. If you get it wrong and you actually get the situation where you miss the swarm cells and the bees try to swarm, then clipping a queen's wing will temporarily delay them from swarming. But it's not a method of swarm management. It's purely a means of delaying them. So come the summer, once again, when we've got some new queens, we'll have a look at why we clip a queen's wing and how we do it. And before anybody mentions, no, it's not cruel. There's no nerves in the wing. The queen doesn't even move when you do it. And also, it's a very good way of ensuring that you manage your bees properly. But we'll look at that in the summer when we've got some queens. We'll look at how we do it and why we do it. And there'll actually be a video on that come the summer. So those are the main questions that were asked and I hope they've been useful. If anybody's got any other questions, please don't hesitate to put them in the comments. Also, we'd very much like you to subscribe to these videos if you can, please. We're getting fabulous numbers of watch times. We could do with a few more subscribers, that would be really good. As usual, if you've got any ideas for videos you'd like making, once again, pop them down in the comments section. And also, if you'd like to know more about beekeeping, we've now got our online courses available, and I'll also put a link to those down in the description below. So until the next time, time for a continue with a cup of tea. I've almost finished my brownie in between takes because I'm greedy that way. But thanks for listening again and thanks for your comments and look forward to seeing you in the next video when we'll continue with our beekeeping.